Hi students, welcome to Pathophysiology. I'm Dr. Lindsay and I'm excited to go through this class with you. It's been a while since I've taught this course, so I'm excited to go through that material again. All right, contact information over here on the right hand side. This is me, I uh, usually go by Dr. Lindsay. My phone number listed here goes to my desk. I very rarely sit at my desk. I'm usually in a lab or a classroom or I'm working remotely. And when that's the case, I can't answer my phone. But I do get voicemails no matter where I am. So if you call and I don't answer, please leave a voicemail. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, but the alternative and probably faster way to get a hold of me is through email. If you've never taken a uh, Rasmussen course before, it might be a little bit um, tricky to figure this out. Course messages over here. Um, at the top, you create a message. Seems pretty intuitive. You have to click on the to box to find out who you're sending it to. Make sure you scroll down until you see my name. It also has Rasmussen instructor there. Move it over to the recipients, and then the rest is like a basic email. But if you've never used that before, it's kind of um, counterintuitive at first. Just make sure that my name's in the recipients before you send it over. Let's go back to the course home. A couple other things you'll see on the home page. Uh, the live classroom session information. This recording right now is going to count for your live lecture one recording. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not offering it live, but week one is always crazy and students are popping in and out of classes, they're dropping, they're adding, and it's just too hard to get things scheduled in this first week. So this is a recording in weeks two through five. You'll notice that there are specific dates to attend. If you can attend, that's awesome. If you can't, that's okay. Um, I'm always going to record every single lecture. So if you can't make it at 5.30 central time on those Wednesdays, that's all right. You'll have the recording to watch on your own time. Just make sure you get that done and then um, you get your keyword submitted in time. You have to submit a keyword. I'll tell you more about that in a bit. If you're going to attend the live lecture, click this link at the top. That only works when I'm logged in at these specific times. If you want to record, uh, watch the recording, those will be posted here in this box too. So where it says link will be posted here, this one that I'm recording right now is going to be posted right there. And that will um, continue each week. Okay, what else we got here? Um, if you're new to Rasmussen or you're new to college, APA formatting can be a challenge. I posted this video here to help you figure out how to do some citations. You won't be necessarily writing uh, papers very much in this class, not like essay style papers, but you will need to use citations for your discussions and other assignments. So it would be worth looking through this video right now just to get a handle on how to find those resources. Okay, let's take a look at your syllabus over here on the left hand side. I won't read through the whole thing, but I do want to point out grades because that's what students always care about, right? Uh, there's a grading criteria box right here that lists out all of the assignments that you'll have throughout the course. So there's a discussion post each week. There are some written assignments. There's a course project, one midterm exam, one final exam, and a live classroom keyword that you have to enter each week. And they all add up to 450 points. You can see how the percentages are divvied up over here in the right-hand column. To pass the course, you need to get above 73%. That's a little higher than general courses, so make sure you're paying attention to that as we wrap up the course. You have to have 73% to pass, and that's an overall grade. That has nothing to do with a specific test. You could get a 60% on the final, for example, and you'll still pass the course if your overall grade is above 73. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know if it doesn't. The only other thing I want to point out specifically about the syllabus is at the very bottom. The academic integrity policy, basically no cheating. You kind of get that, right? That's just obvious. But I don't think that everyone really understands what cheating is when we look at an online course. A lot of your research will be done by using websites or e-textbooks, things that you find online. When you use that type of resource, it's very easy to copy that information and paste it into your assignment. That will not be accepted that is a form of plagiarism and it will be reported. So don't do it. If you're tempted to copy and paste, 
don't do it. I just want to be really clear up front. Um, I don't accept that work. This is a college course. I expect college level work. If you have any questions about what, um, how to cite something or if you're unsure if this is a good resource or if you think there's no way that I can rephrase this, contact me. Talk to me about it beforehand. But if you submit something that has been copied, it will be reported to your um, academic file and you don't want that. So let's save both of us some trouble. Don't do it. Okay. All right, your textbook is an e-text right here, Pathophysiology. You can get to that on the left-hand border right there. It takes just a moment to load this up. Um, all right, I'm kind of in the middle of the book right here. Let's go back to the beginning. The cover looks like this. You have a table of contents on the side. If you've never used a vital source, get familiar with it. Um, you'll probably have several courses that use this format for textbooks, so you want to know how to get things and how to search for specific things. If you want to know more about kidneys, you can search in here. Go along the left-hand side. It'll bring up everything in the book that has kidneys. It's just a really slick way of finding the information you need very quickly. So take some time to figure that out. And let's go into module one. In every module, you have lesson content and you have assignments. The lesson content is everything that you need to study for the week. So we've got objectives, this is what we're learning. Gives you an overview of the assignments that are due. And then information. A lot of this is just text, a little bit of reading. You might find some interactive uh, videos or some widgets that are like flashcards that'll help you learn certain things. But this is the information you need to know before you do your assignments, before you take your tests, etc. So scroll through all of this information. Make sure you have a good understanding of what's going on in this lesson content before you move on. One other thing while I'm in this module, your project overview is outlined right here. Take a second to look through that. Um, in this module, you're going to choose a disease that you're, you will be researching for your project. And in module five, you're gonna turn in this final project. So that gives you several weeks in the meantime to start gathering information, putting your information together into your project, and essentially creating um, your final work. You have the whole class to work on it, but it is up to you to keep up on it. Don't wait until module five because that's going to make you crazy. There's gonna to be too much going on at that point. Work on it a little bit at a time, a little bit each week. All right, let's scroll back up. Uh, and we'll go back into the module one folder and this time we'll look at the assignments for this week. You have a discussion forum due and you'll notice it says post first discussion. That means that you won't see anyone else's posts until you post your work. And then once you do, you'll see everyone else that has already posted and then you'll be able to engage in some conversation. This week you're talking about vaccinations um, really kind of a hot topic. There is tons of bad information on the internet regarding vaccinations. Don't use the bad information. Uh, take the time to look through some valid, um, reliable resources and formulate an opinion that is backed up by those resources. You must cite a reference. You have to cite a reference for this class in every single discussion. Um, I want to be very clear about that. It's worth two points of your discussion each week. So 20% of your work is backing up your opinion with a source and citing it in the appropriate format. Again, there's that APA help that I um, showed you in the beginning. Let me go back to it just in case I forgot. Uh, here, looking for APA help. Check that out if you don't know how to do citations. It's really simple. It just takes a little bit of trying. You just can figure it out. Um, and then I also listed um, one of my favorite resources for this topic, uh, CHOP, Children's uh, Hospitals Philadelphia. Um, it's a really good resource. I think it's very balanced in how it presents information. It doesn't say, uh, you must vaccinate your children, and it doesn't say, vaccines are bad. It's a little bit of both. It's right in the middle. It actually provides a good moderate um, 
delivery of that kind of content and allows you to make your own opinion. So I would recommend that you start your research here, but don't limit it to that. You can um, keep finding tons of other resources. It's, there's too much, honestly, online, but if you can find one that works for you and helps you understand this week's content, that's great. Okay, what else? We talked about live lectures. Let me give you a peek ahead at module two. In module two, you'll find that you have another um, discussion post. This time you'll have a written assignment. This will take a little bit more of your time, so work ahead if you can. Again, there's APA format that's needed. Get used to it. I know it's not the most fun thing in the world, but it is there for a purpose. And um, our live classroom each week. So when you go to this week's live classroom, in, um, module one, it'll look just like this one. You're gonna hit begin, and you'll see this empty text box. And it says, enter your response from the live classroom this week. So for module one, this video, I want you to enter the definition of inflammation. So when you're in module one and you look at the live classroom and it says enter your response, to get your 10 points this week, you need to type in the text box the definition of inflammation. And I'll say it one more time just so we're really clear. Module one, this is the key word, right, for your live lecture you need to enter the definition of inflammation. And then once you get that typed in there, just save and submit. It'll ask you if you want to submit. Pop, 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 pop. And when you see this page, that means that you submitted your answer. You won't see a score right away because I have to log back in, make sure that you have the answer correct, and then award those points. Uh, but if you see this page, it has been submitted. All right. so. Consider this recording your first live lecture. If you have any questions, you have any comments, please contact me. Email is the best option. Um, phone is okay too. I am more than happy to walk you through some of this beginning information if you're just getting new to online classes or if you're new to college in general. But I need to hear from you in order to help you. So let me know if you have questions and I will talk to you soon.